colonialism is portrayed as a bad thing? Where white people came, destroyed the land and subjugated the natives. There are many stories that portray white people as the villains who came and destroyed paradise. But this is far from the truth. In all cases, the so-called natives were not natives, but immigrants themselves who wiped out the first natives. In the US, American Indians were not the first people. The earliest skeletons are not American Indian. American Indians wiped them out, and still retain stories today about how they did it for sport. In Australia, the Aborigines wiped out the first pygmies after migrating from Africa. They also wiped out all the Australian megafauna. In New Zealand, Maoris arrived only a few hundred years before white people. They came in waves from Polynesia, and wiped out the first settlers in a perpetual war. The truth is, white people colonized the world. If it wasn't for white people, there would not be civilization. White people didn't just colonize the world for themselves, but for everyone else as well. Haiti for example, a black country, was colonized by white people. Mauritius for example, a country of blacks and Indians, was colonized by white people. In continents that already had some people living on them, white people did not simply walk in and take over. The people on these continents were few in number, and lived a savage, primitive life. White people came, lived in unoccupied areas and gave them everything they ever had. None of these people have ever contributed anything back to the white civilization that feeds them. They tell false stories of history, to place a guilt trip on white people and milk them for reparations. It's time to dispel the toxic anti-white myths and stop exploiting the white race. In the US, before the white race arrived, American Indians were living in some of the poorest conditions known to man. They were stuck in perpetual tribal warfare, engaging in savage behavior such as skinning each other alive and scalping them. American Indians were primitive and savage. They cannot trace their culture back beyond the arrival of white people because they had no culture outside of rampantly killing each other. All of their so-called culture, was appropriated from the white race. Hence why every account of American Indian history can only be traced back a couple of hundred years. According to the anti-white propaganda, there were 100 million American Indians when white people arrived. This is false, there were only a few million of them, and there was no nation only scattered tribes who perpetually killed each other. There is no way to know for certain how many there were, but earlier estimates, before the anti-white propaganda, were between 5 and 10 million, and they did not live throughout the continent. White settlers arrived and lived in unoccupied areas. When they met the Indians, they bought some land off them despite Indians not living in those lands. Land was not stolen. As the propaganda claims, if anything, American Indians stole land off white settlers. They raided and looted white settlements when the supply of free gifts to pacify them ran out. There is a term Indian giver, which refers to the Indian lack of morals when it comes to trade, where they change their mind after the trade, take back what they traded while keeping what was given to them. American Indians were not genocided. Some of the most savage tribes were wiped out in self-defense, in a war against their constant raiding and looting of white settlements. It was American Indians who were engaging in genocide, as they had been doing long before white people arrived. White people did not purposely kill off millions of American Indians with disease. As part of being a global community, everyone is exposed to new diseases. They have to build up a tolerance to them. The Black Plain wiped out the majority of white people, just as American Indians had to build up a tolerance to smallpox and other diseases. Their unsanitary lifestyle didn't help. If it wasn't for white people helping them, they might not have survived. The reason why American Indians developed such a plague, was because they multiplied out of control after white people arrived. They received white handouts and thrived. The plague of smallpox didn't happen until their numbers went out of control. White settlers gave American Indians everything they ever had. 
American Indians have leached a free ride of white people ever since they arrived. They have contributed nothing in return. They have abnormally high welfare rates. And many of them are alcoholics and drug addicts. As no land was stolen from them, they have reservations of land where their ancestors once lived. American Indians who live in these reservations are living in poverty-stricken ghettos because they lack the desire to better themselves and contribute something to society. American Indians were not peaceful and they were not attuned to nature. They were destructive vandals, which is why they lived in deserts since they destroyed their environment with never-ending tribal warfare. If they were attuned to nature, they would be living in forests and making the country green. Instead, they destroyed everything. All the pro-Indian, anti-white propaganda is lies designed to put a false guilt trip on white people and exploit their generosity. In Australia, before white people arrived, Aborigines were living in the poorest conditions known to man. They were all suffering from extreme malnutrition. They were primitive and savage, engaging in constant tribal warfare and cannibalism. The very first time the white man met the Aborigines, was of Aborigines chasing down a white man with spears to eat him. Contrary to popular belief, there was no nation of Aborigines before white people arrived, nor were they great in number. There were only a few scattered tribes, totaling 400,000. Aborigines did not live throughout the continent. White people gave the Aborigines everything they ever had. They were and still are the most primitive of mankind. Today, unlimited funding is put into their education, and regardless of that they still have an average IQ of only 62. That's almost half of the white average. And consider that half of Aborigines have an IQ lower than 62. Aborigines are too primitive to be able to live in civilization. The government gives them unlimited free handouts, but they waste it all. They cut down the houses built for them, and use it as firewood. They wander the streets at night, eating out of bins, despite being given piles of money. Most of them have decided to live out in the bush, away from civilization. They survive on free, unlimited welfare. They suffer from chronic social problems, such as child abuse and cannibalism, alcoholism and croaking which is sniffing petrol. Aborigines are prey to their primal instincts, and cannot resist the effects of substance abuse. No land was stolen from Aborigines. Aborigines only lived in small areas, as there were only 400,000 of them living across a whole continent. Nonetheless, Aborigines have claimed vast amounts of land for the purpose of selling it to the government for a fortune. Vast amounts of land are reserved for Aborigines, Due to their fraudulent claims, the Aboriginal Land Council runs all the Aboriginal land claims, and they have themselves stolen land from Aborigines and claimed it all as their own. In the name of profit, there was no stolen generation. For 100 years, there was a campaign to take children away from abusive parents, in an effort to correct the cause of social problems. This affected whites and Aborigines alike, and for the most part, it worked. Children from broken families lived a far better life and the social problems were significantly reduced. The claim that a whole generation of Aborigines were taken away and stripped of their culture, is a lie made up to place a guilt trip on white people and leaves them for reparations. Aborigines have a history of cannibalizing white children. Before being fed with unlimited welfare, they used to rampantly kidnap and eat white children. Aborigines have a long list of special rights and laws that give them the power to do almost anything and get away with it. Contrary to popular belief, Aborigines have not been mistreated by white people. They have been given everything they ever had, with obscene amounts of funding being put into helping them better themselves. But they don't, because they are primitive, incapable of civilization and lack the evolutionary desire for self-improvement. In their whole existence, all they have ever invented is a stick, one version for throwing and another version for making noise. All the pro-aboriginal, anti-white propaganda is a lie designed to put a false guilt trip on white people and exploit their generosity. 
Most of this exploitation doesn't come from Aborigines themselves, since they lack the intellectual capacity to understand how money works. It's coming from interracial crossbreeds of Aboriginal descent. These people are not even Aborigines. You'll never see them tough it out in the bush like real Aborigines. Instead, they spent all their time pointing fingers at white people to get more money from the government. In New Zealand, before white people arrived, the Maori people were stuck in perpetual tribal warfare and cannibalism. The first experiences of white explorers were of being attacked and killed by the Maori. The Maori were few in number due to their endless wars. When white people finally settled in New Zealand, they gave the Maori everything they ever had. The Maori eventually turned on the white settlers and went to war, which they lost. Today, the Maori make up only 15% of the population, yet they make up half of all crime and most of the welfare recipients. Maori have difficulty finding work, because of what they call the warrior gene, which makes them lazy most of the time, yet spontaneously violent and destructive and engaging in high-risk behavior such as theft and attacking random people. Maori people will frequently and openly admit this problem, and shrug it off as an unfortunate part of their nature that evolved through a long history of war. White people did not take anything from the Maori. White people gave them everything they ever had, and showed them a better life than endless war and cannibalism. Colonialism brought civilization, human rights, technology, food, shelter, running water and countless other advances to primitive cultures, or lack of culture. White people gave everyone else everything they ever had. Nothing was stolen. Everything was given. White people owe the world nothing. It is the world that owes white people everything. Colonialism brought the rest of the world out of the Stone Age. Regardless of which example you use, it is the same story being played out over and over. White people give primitive people everything they ever had. They get greedy and perpetually demand more. They realize that white people have morals and are prone to guilt. So they exploit that guilt with false stories and get endless handouts from the government. This exploitation needs to stop for the good of everyone. All the social problems that exist in these exploitative communities are only made worse by feeding their greed. They must be forced to live with the consequences of their own actions, and learn to build their own civilization. They cannot and should not be expected to live in white civilization. They should live in separation, in the land already reserved for them, and do it for themselves.